He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. Took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. There really ought to be a sign upon my heart. Don't judge me yet, there's an unfinished part. But I'm just perfect. According to his plan, fashioned by the master's loving hands. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. It took him just a week to make the moon and the stars, the sun and the earth and Jupiter and Mars. How loving and patient he must be, cause he's still working on me. Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone today? Isn't it a gorgeous day to be out in the house of the Lord? It's made a beautiful day for us today. Um, we'll get started this morning. Brother Greg, would you like to lead us in prayer for Sunday school? Good morning. Well, we finished up, or we're starting a new quarter, <clears throat> and I thought we might progress on through the Old Testament, but we're actually dropping back a few books here. Lesson this morning's out of Exodus, and it's <clears throat> starting in chapter 16. So I'm going to go back and start chapter one. <laughs> Brief summary. Uh, most of you know, or I feel like most of you know, that remember the story of Joseph, <clears throat> Jacob's son, one of Jacob's sons. And it was evidently his favorite son. And he had made the coat for him, the coat of many colors. And... Uh, Joseph had dreams and had told his brothers and his father about them and ended up his brothers become really jealous of him. <clears throat> and they plot to get rid of him. And they were going to kill him. <clears throat> but it ended up they sold him into slavery and he was taken into Egypt and started out as working as a as a slave there and actually worked his way on up into different positions and because of his ability to interpret dreams and, and the, they knew how smart he was and how trustworthy he was, he actually rose to become second in leadership or second in command in Egypt. And later on, famine in Jacob's area and his brothers 
Jacob sent his sons into Egypt to get uh, food, grain, and they encountered Joseph there, but they didn't really realize or recognize him. And it went on that Joseph was kind of playing tricks on them, and uh, I guess he was feeling somewhat hurt by what they'd done to him, but he came to realize that everything had worked out for the good, that the Lord had planned it that way. He saw that the Lord had been working through all of that and it brought him to where he was for a reason. And that reason was to take care of not just the people in Egypt, but also his family now that had come there. And then Joseph, <clears throat> when he did tell his brothers who he was, and uh, he brought uh, his father, his family, all of his brothers and all their flocks and families and everything into Egypt. And they lived in an area called Goshen that was given to them. Well, as time passed, <clears throat> it said there rose up a king or a ruler that didn't know Joseph and didn't realize how important Joseph had been to Egypt. And also, over a period of years, the, the Israelites or, or the descendants of Jacob had increased, multiplied in number. And the Egyptians began to fear them because they'd increased in such number. And they thought they'd better do something with them while they had the opportunity until they become outnumbered by them. And they put them in slavery. And as time went on, they put more hardship upon them and required more of them <clears throat> to do such that the, it said that the work that they began to do was, was heavy, burdensome work and that they had built cities for the pharaohs and uh, any type of hard work to be done. That's what they used the Israelites to do. And the Israelites began to pray to God that he would deliver them from this burdensome work, the, the, the slavery position that they had been put in by the Egyptians. And, and God heard their prayers and he raised up a man by the name of Moses. And Moses... At the time, the pharaohs wanted to decrease the number of uh, Israelites, and they had told the the uh, midwives yeah, to, uh, if if a male child was born, they were to destroy that child. But they didn't. The, the midwives didn't do it. They said they answered to God, and not the pharaoh. They feared God more than they feared the pharaoh. But anyway, he went ahead and passed the law that all the men child of the Israelites were to be killed. Well, Moses was an Israelite. He was born to an Israelite. And his mother kept him hid for, I think it was three or four months, three months. And uh, then she put him in a basket, made a little basket, a little ark, and put it in the river. And as it would happen, one of Pharaoh's sister saw it and retrieved it, or had one of her handmaidens retrieve it out of the out of the or out of the uh, river. And when she opened it up, she saw the child in there and realized that it was a Hebrew child. But she took it to raise it for her own. So Moses was raised and educated as an Egyptian. But later on, he, began, he knew, he found out that he was Hebrew. And he chose then to live as a Hebrew and not as, as one of the Egyptians. But Moses had killed one of the Egyptians when he saw them beating or mistreating one of the Hebrews, slaves. And he killed him and hit him, it said in the sand. But evidently someone had saw it. And he become aware that some that this may get back to the Pharaoh and he'd be killed. So Moses left Egypt, went into the back country, and stayed with a man, was it Jethro? His father-in-law Jethro became his father-in-law Jethro. And he stayed there for several years. And under the guidance of God and, and the leadership of Jethro and stuff, he, he was more or less groomed to become a leader because God knew what he was going to use him for. 
And then it comes in to remember the burning bush that Moses was on the mountain and saw the burning bush and went to it. And God began to tell him and talk to him out of that burning bush as what he had plans for Moses to do, that he wanted him to deliver his people out of Egypt. And Moses said he didn't feel qualified to be doing that. He couldn't speak. He couldn't, he couldn't argue the point with, with Pharaoh. So Moses ended up, he went back, and God told him that his brother Aaron could speak for him. And that between the two of them, they could get the job done. So Moses goes to Pharaoh and begins to tell him that God wants him to let his people go, take the burden off of them, let them leave. And Pharaoh turns a deaf ear. And because of that, there was 10 different plagues brought upon Egypt. And each one of them was more troublesome or worrisome. And finally, the last plague was, and Pharaoh most almost pronounced it upon himself, but that the firstborn of them would be killed. Of all, all of the Egyptians, all of their flocks, their stock, everything would be die, that would die, but that was the firstborn. And this is where the Passover that the Jews celebrate comes from. Because God told the, told the Israelites the Hebrews to take a lamb without blemish, a uh, yearling, with it, with it not over a year old, and without blemish to put that up and hold it until the day of the Passover feast. And he said, then you kill the lamb, you take the blood, strike it up on the doorpost and up on the lintel over the top. And when the angel, the death angel passes by, when he comes through, when he sees the blood over the door, then he will pass by or pass over you, but he will kill all of the Egyptians because they didn't know to put blood over their doors. So that's where the, the first sacrifice really began. It's where that was, the, that lamb, the true sacrifice began, where that lamb's blood was shed and was spread, and when the death angel would see it, it would pass over the sentence of death was not pronounced upon them at that time. They would die later as natural death. But because of the death coming from the, the death angel coming through, they were passed over. Now that's the second, the second true real sacrifice that was made was by Jesus Christ. And again, it was because of the blood that when he died for our sins, just as that lamb died to protect the Hebrews, the, the uh, Israelites, from the death. We are protected from eternal death and damnation by the blood of Jesus Christ. His blood was shed for us. When God looks at us to pronounce sentence upon us, he doesn't see our sins. He sees Christ's blood that covers our sins. When he looks upon us, He's not looking upon our past of what we were. He's looking upon us now as we are because of the washing, the cleansing of Christ's blood that was shed for us. And just as that death angel passed over the Hebrews at that time, God's love, God's, when he looks at us and sees Jesus' blood, he passes over that death sentence upon us that we're separated from him for eternity that we can still be with him because of the blood that was shed for us by his son, Jesus. Now, once that that plague was carried out, that sentence was carried out, and that night of the Passover, it told them, said, keep your clothing on, gird yourself, keep your staff in your hand, and eat in haste. And uh, anything that's left of that lamb, it said, burn it the next morning and be on your way. It said, be ready to go. And that's more or less what they did. When the Egyptians uh, were burying their dead, then the Israelites began to exit, exodus out of Egypt and with, uh, made haste and did it. They were wanting to get out of there quick before he changed his mind again. And uh, so it was about, they said, about two million people left Egypt at that time, two million in number. And it said 600,000 men, not including the children and the women, 
and other converts that had, that had been converted to Judaism and went, actually went with them, had been worshiping the, the true God. So about two million people left and they, were, they got to the Red Sea and by that time, a week or 10 days or so, the Pharaoh did change his mind and decided, what, what have we done? Why have we let all these people leave? And now how are we, who are we gonna have to do our work for us? And he decides to go back, bring them back, and maybe kill off a bunch of them. So he equips his army, chariots, horsemen, and they go after the Israelites. And they've got them backed up to the sea there. Well, the Lord had been leading the Israelites by a cloud during the day and by a cloud of fire at night that they could see. And they kept the, that separated the Egyptians from the Israelites at the Red Sea there. So they were between the cloud of the Lord, the protection, and the Red Sea. And God tells Moses to just lift up his hands or lift up his staff and, he, and it'll make a place for them to get away. And it did, and the sea opened up, the parting of the sea. And they go through on dry land. Well, as they are finishing getting out on the other side, then the cloud disappears and lets the Egyptians go through. And Pharaoh orders his army to follow through after them. And they're out into the sea and Moses takes his hands down or drops his hands and the sea begins to close in on them and destroys Pharaoh's army. And it says not one of Pharaoh's army survived it or all that had followed him out there to get to the Hebrews. So they were destroyed. The army was destroyed. The Israelites had seen miracle after miracle. They'd seen all the plagues that God had brought upon the Egyptians. They saw what he could do to protect them, how he, had, how he was leading them, how he had parted the sea, and they go through on dry land to the other side, how he had destroyed the Egyptian army. And miracle after miracle that he had done for them. Now, we're getting close to where we actually are in chapter 16 today. But in chapter 15, after they crossed the Red Sea, that whole chapter, if you could read it, was more or less a song of praise to the God, how they were celebrating what God had done for them, how he had blessed them and brought them out of slavery, and how he had destroyed Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea. And now we're going into chapter 16. And we actually start in less than verse 2, but I'll read verse 1 here. And it says, And they took their journey from Elam, and all the congregations of the children of Israel came unto the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. So now they'd been out, it's 15 days, I guess. And they had come to the wilderness called the wilderness of sin. Now this wilderness area was a barren area, dirt, sand, rocks, rugged, rugged territory. And as they're getting ready to approach into it is where we are today. Now they'd been, I think it was maybe about a month it actually been. But anyway, their provisions was getting short. Their food was getting short. The water was running out. And they were beginning to get worried. And being the people they were, and you've got to remember, they were slaves before for years and years. They were not used to having freedom and having to actually fend for themselves. They were used to having stuff supplied to them. And what they did have, they were now running out of. And they knew that they didn't have the Egyptians there to supply them with stuff. So they began to get worried. And they began to grumble and to uh, complain to Moses and to Aaron both. Now, you've got to remember, they didn't really know Moses and Aaron all that well either. 
So they were placing their trust. They knew they were getting their freedom. They were more than willing to get out from under the burden. But once they got the freedom, they didn't really know how to use the freedom, how to, they weren't adjusted to being free. And that's the kind of predicament they're in. They're wondering now, how are we gonna survive out here? And the area we're getting ready to go into is even worse than what we've just come through. So they're complaining to Moses, complaining to Aaron. And in verse two there, it says, and the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. So they begin to complain. What are we going to do, Moses? What, 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 what do you have for us? Where's our food going to come from? You know, we're running out of water and we don't see any wells around anywhere. And the children, verse 3, And the children of Israel said unto them, Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and when we did eat bread to the full, for you have brought us forth into this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. You brought us out where at least we did have food. They said by the flesh pots, that means they were sitting by what was cooking. We did have stuff to eat. We had bread to eat till we were full. We may have been under the burdens. We may have been living a hard life, but at least we weren't starving to death and drying up. And here you've brought us into this land and look at it. It's even going to be worse when we go on out into the desert area and we're just starving to death. And what a terrible way to die here. We would have rather died in Egypt with the Egyptians the way the Lord had killed them than to come out here and die in this wilderness and starve to death. So they were complaining to Moses and to Aaron. Verse 4 it says, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or not. Now God knew what he was doing. This is going to be a trial period for the Hebrews. And he said, I will try them. I'll find out if they're going to walk in my way or if they're not going to walk in my way. Verse 5, and it says, And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Now why twice as much on the sixth day? Well, the seventh day was their Sabbath day, their holy day, the day that they worshiped their God. And for that reason, by the laws Talmud wasn't at this time. It hadn't been written. So I don't, that was just, uh, I guess, one of the laws that they had come up with to go by that they didn't do anything on the Sabbath day except keep it a holy day to worship their God. But anyway, that's what they said. The amount that you gather on the sixth day will be twice as much as the days before, and that will hold you over. Because if they did gather more during those other days, for previous days, it would just spoil overnight. And one reason for that, and I'll get to that in just a minute. Yeah, in, in Egypt they did. They, it was a seven day week. Yep. So they. they yep. And they. So they gleaned up twice as much Saturday, or not Saturday, but the sixth day, and they had enough to hold them over on the Sabbath so that they wouldn't have to work or do anything on the Sabbath. Verse 6, And Moses and Aaron said unto all the children of Israel, At evening then you shall know that the Lord hath brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning then you shall see the glory of the Lord, for that he heareth your murmurings against the Lord. And what are we that ye murmur against us? Listen, they're telling them, listen, you maybe think you're just complaining to us, but we're doing what the Lord has told us to do. So really who you're talking about is God. You're complaining about God. 
you're not just complaining about us, but you are complaining about the one who's done everything for you. Verse 8. And Moses said, This shall be when the Lord shall give you in the evening flesh to eat, and in the morning bread to the full. For that the Lord heareth your murmurings, which ye murmur against him. And what are we? Your murmurings are not against us, but against the Lord. So what you're saying, you're really com you think you're complaining about Moses and Aaron, but you're complaining about God. You're complaining about the Lord, the one who has done everything for you up until now. So the Lord tells Moses, I will help to get these people off of your back. I'm going to, it's going to rain down or there'll be a, the bread from heaven will come down and they can gather that up. And not only that, but this, for this one day anyway, they're going to have flesh to eat in the evening. And he says, then you will know that it is God that has provided it for you. This will open your eyes again and make you realize who is taking care of you, what he has done for you already. This will open your eyes again and let you see what God can do and is, will do and is doing for you. So <clears throat> getting back to the bread spoiling if they got too much during the day. That was so that they become that they knew that they had to depend on God the next day. It was from day to day to day that they had to depend on God, and it's for the, for their for their life for their life for the bread the bread of life, and that's just like us today that we spiritually have to depend on Jesus day after day after day. You can't rest on what was provided for you here or for what good that you've done the day before. It's a new day. You've got a new start. You have to have the presence of God with you in this new, under, for the trials of the new day. Just like they needed the food to keep them physically going, we need Jesus' presence with us, the presence of the Spirit with us every day to strengthen us spiritually, to keep us going for whatever may come about during the day. So that was one of the reasons that the bread would spoil, is to make them more dependent, to let them know that they had to depend on God for their life. <clears throat> Any comments or questions? Yes. <laughs> we need to stop and think about it, though. <laughs> Yep. 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 I take that step, brother, brother Larry. When you complain about the preacher and his message, you're you're complaining against God. Amen. True. You, you uh, alluded earlier of the Pascal Lamb being a shadow and a type of Jesus Christ. Yep. And it was. Now, also, the wilderness of sin is a shadow and a type, and you touched on it very briefly, of us today. But if you dwell on that and spread it out a little, 
because just just like the Hebrews were there, their their physical needs he was meeting them, which would help them to come to know that he could that he blessed them spiritually as well. But the same when our physical needs aren't met, then we and needs I said not just wants but our needs, then we sometimes tend to begin to get worried like they were worried there. We begin to forget that God can take care of us and we t tend to let to look at the problem more than we do what we know the answer to that is because we know the one who can take care of us whatever problem may arise for us. So we dwell too much sometimes on the problem and not the answer to it. Okay, verse 9. <clears throat> and Moses spoke, spake unto Aaron, tells Aaron, he says, Say unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, Come near before the Lord, for he hath heard your murmurings. So he's wanting the congregation to come in. And it came to pass as Aaron spake unto the whole congregation of the children of Israel that they looked toward the wilderness. And behold, the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, speaking to them, saying, at even, at even ye shall eat flesh, and in the morning ye shall be filled with bread, and ye shall know that I am the Lord your God. Now, as they were approaching into the wilderness of sin, the Lord tells them to bring the congregation in. And when they do gather, then the Lord appears, this is in the cloud there, and he begins to speak to Moses. Now evidently, they could hear, but they could not understand what Moses was hearing. My, the, the way I'm thinking of this, I may be wrong, but I'm thinking in this cloud there may have been something that, to get their attention. It could have been fire, it could have been lightning, it could have been thunder, but it was getting the attention of the, of the Israelites there. But Moses was hearing something that they weren't because he says, tell the people, tell the congregation of Israel this. And so when Moses does that, He, he, God tells him to tell them that you shall eat flesh this evening and in the morning you shall be filled with bread and you shall know, you'll know where this come from because but by the way it's going to be done and by the feed two million people, it would take, a, it, it took a miracle to do it. So in order to do that from nothing here, <clears throat> for all of a sudden to them be fed, with flesh and with bread, it took a miracle to do it. <clears throat> Verse 13, And it came to pass that, even, that at even the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning dew lay round about the host. And when the dew lay, lay, that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as an oar of frost on the ground, as the oar frost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said one to another, it is manna, for they wist not what it was. And that's what manna means. What is it? They didn't know what it was. And Moses said unto them, this is the bread which the Lord, which the Lord hath given you to eat. This is what he was talking about. Now, the commentaries that I read said this manna, or whatever it was, was actually small, about the size of a seed. I can't remember what, I can't 
can't remember what size seed it says, but it's seeds in clumps. And they would pick those up and then mash them and make a uh, meal out of it and make cakes, like potato cakes or, or I'm going to say flapjacks, pancakes. <laughs> and uh, they could eat that as their bread. Whatever was powerful, because it goes on to say that it, it tasted, the taste was very pleasant to them, like honey, like it had been made with honey. And they, then they knew, can you imagine all of a sudden to see a cloud of quail coming over two million people, enough for two million people to kill them? And it said the quails usually nest low to the ground, so they would come in and just lay down to roost, or, <clears throat> and it was easy for them to kill them, to get the meat. So they got the meat for their evening meal there, and when they got up the next morning, they saw the dew all over everything, and then when the dew began to dissipate, they could see this white stuff on the ground. And it said it looked like a, a frost, or it was a grayish looking in color, white to gray. And they began, they didn't know what it was until Moses said, this is the bread. This is what you're going to make your bread out of. This is what God has given you now. And when they began to pick it up and then process it and make their, their cakes out of it and eat it, it was very comforting to them. It was very tasteful to them. And supply gave them the nourishment they ne that they needed. So in order for this to come when they saw this, how it come about, that all those quail, just all of a sudden, a cloud of them come over and just land over the whole camp, over two million people. And then the next morning when they get up and they see this dew all over everything, and as it rises or dissipates away, then they see this stuff all over the ground. And they go out and they can make their bread out of that it helped them or should have helped them to realize who was taking care of them and how miraculous it was that he could just do that and supply all the need that they had, the need that they had, not all the wants that they wanted right then, but it supplied their immediate needs. Yeah, and that's... Dirty and bacteria either. <laughs> no, no bacteria there. It was all fresh. <laughs> and he continued to do this 40 years. Can you imagine that? So he took care of them, and getting ahead, it said when they come out of the desert after 40 years, can you imagine the clothing that they had that had lasted for 40 years? I don't know if too much clothing had lasted 40 years, <laughs> if we're using it all the time. But the, God took care of them. It, the whole purpose, God, the lesson title is God provides manna and quail. But you could just stop and say God provides whatever the need may be that we have today, just like the need that they had, the immediate need they had there. God provides for us. If we are true to him, if we follow his statutes, if we worship God and do what he tells us to do, just like Brother Lowell said, there are certain things that he promises that will come about with us if we are true to him, if we follow his statutes. So really, God provides is for us today as much as it was for the Hebrews at that time. He takes care of us. He took care of them. And just by reading the history of this here should help us to understand and help us to increase our faith just like what he did for them, increased their faith. So we know what he has done for them. We know what he's capable of doing. And we should always look to him to the answer of our problem instead of concentrating so much on the problem. We take our problems to God and place it at his feet, and that will help to lift the burden off of our back. And if we trust in him, that problem is going to be taken care of. Sometimes it may not be the way we expect it to be taken care of, but in the end, we can look back and see that worked out just the way it should have. God knows and knew what he was doing and still does today. When you read the story of that generation, they go all the bread they saw. You know, denying things. That's America, that's people. Then you come down to our day, and some people are bold. The, 
the problem is they are more or less worshiping the creation, what God has provided for them, instead of worshiping the creator, the one that gave it to them or allowed them to acquire that or allowed us to live in a country where we do and, and enjoy the freedoms that we have. A lot of these people I don't think really understand and they keep going back and saying it because of the way they've been taught in school, especially in universities, colleges and universities, that they've been uh, more or less indoctrinated a certain thing. I don't think they've been actually been taught uh, the way God has had his hand on this country throughout the whole history of this country, the way he, he has blessed this country, not because of what the people of this country have done. They did it, but it was God working through them that did it. And they don't understand that. So they're, they're more or less taking it. No. Has to be a change. Change on it. Every once in a while, you'll see him in an interview. Someone will say, "Well, the real problem is a spiritual problem in this country. It's not a problem, a materialistic type problem, but it's a spiritual problem. And if they have a change of heart, and everybody's in one accord, everything's going to be as it should be." Mm -mm. Any other comments, questions? He said he was the bread of life. He is our daily bread of life spiritually for us. And, and that you take care of it spiritually and everything else will be taken care of. Okay. My time is up.
His acceptance by my Savior, Lord, and So there's comfort when I come to the end of last year. Heaven's light there for me, safe to walk with me, walk with me, gracious Jesus. I can't make it one day on my own. Walk with me, walk with me through the dark night. And let the light of your love lead me home. Sit down on the ground to pass the time away. As I looked around, the more that I did, the more I realized I was here. God's coming in. Saw a golden red sun, a silver drop of rain, soft white clothes.
the pink and white baby's cheeks Like this little stormy sky The brown and golden leaves A multi-colored rainbow Stretched out across the sky And the purple haze of sunset Just before the See him everywhere. He's all around me. He's everywhere I look. And each new day is but a new page in God's coloring.
Good morning. Good morning. How is everyone? Beautiful morning this morning. Y'all ready to go to church? Amen. Amen. God's ready to have us. I was thinking earlier today, um, coming to church is like when I grew up, um, going to my grandma's house, which we lived there, all the family came and, and you gathered. And you, you know, you so I, I say socialized, but you visited. And I look forward to every Sunday with church with my church people. It, it reminds me of the way it used to be at home. Anyway, we'll get started this morning. With Sister Tammy's got her report. How about let's let's check our our birthdays this week. Do we have any birthdays? Yeah, it looks like we had a couple, a couple, a couple. But Brother Willie's not here. I'll save him a sucker there, Brother Willie, if you're watching. Let's sing happy birthday. To you a happy birthday to you. And you feel Jesus. Okay, how about anniversaries this week? Did we have any anniversaries last week? No anniversaries? Okay, let's get to choir. You have more, it must be in. Big change I Several of you wanted. Right there, several of them. You already got one. Okay. 419. Um, this don't have the verses in it. We'll have to make them up as we go. Okay, we got one. Okay. 
y'all might well grab them so you can make sure you're singing. The family of God. Are you glad to be part of the family of God? Amen. Amen. The words on the verse, they're not in this book. It's just got the chorus, but uh, you'll notice we say brother and sister around here. Because we're part of a family so dear. That's, uh, that's part of being in a family, isn't it? Amen. Stand with us. Sing loud. You got some space to cover there. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sun. For I'm part. around here it's because we're a family and these folks are so near when one has a heartache we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family Noticing this weather changing just a little bit, and you, you, your throat kind of clogging just a little, and getting a little of that, uh, maybe this uh, golden rod, and some of these other uh, things are starting to come up, and bloom, and these fall weeds, all this stuff. And but uh, you know, uh, God's God's always around, and He's got a, such a beautiful plan. Uh, we were talking about the manna in Sunday school and uh, about the quail coming over. I, 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 always, I, was, I always had a little trouble picturing how that they actually harvested those quails if they just come and died and fell on the ground in front of them or if they were just kind of perched, like you said, roosted and kind of waited for them. But uh, can you imagine if those quails could talk? They's flying over that way. They say, buddy, we're, we're going in to provide a meal for these guys tonight. And... Uh, you know, and they were willing, right? They were, they were just doing God's will. They were just doing what God wanted them to do. We don't know what tomorrow brings, but we want to be willing. I was thinking about the, those instantaneous, the, the, the manna, uh, where we were at last evening. Uh, of course, uh, you probably have noticed. How many of y'all have resurrection lilies around your house? Some of you have resurrection lilies. You know, those things literally, you know, you... Go out one day, mow the grass, and nothing there. The next day, got a stem this tall, and got a flower on. Uh, I noticed last night where we were at, there was some some other little small flowers. I'm not sure what you call them, but but the same way, they were just they were out of the ground about yay far. Had just a beautiful little little bloom on them, and uh, we just can't imagine that. I mean, you know, just hours, just instantaneous, and. But God can do that anyway, anyhow, any place, any, any way that he wants to do it. And uh, he's chosen this morning for us to be part of his family. And we have access to all that. We have access to everything God can do. You know, he, he, he wants to bless us. He wants to just, just spread the table for us. And anything we need, anything we want, I mean, 
he's there. He knows what's good for us, and, and he'll, he'll give us those things. And uh, But yet, also says he'll give us desires of our heart. And uh, we praise him and thank him this morning. All right, let's do the second verse. From the door of an orphanage to the house of the king, no longer an outcast, a new song I sing. From rags unto riches, from the God, I belong. You yeah, ever one of you belong? I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Joy. Morning and welcome. Hope everybody's had a good week this week, and uh, it's just been a, a beautiful weekend. The temperature's a little bit cooler, and, and maybe that little bit of a fall touch. But uh, I'm just so glad that we can be here and rejoicing in the Lord this morning, and uh, we'll just we'll have church. Praise the Lord. So. Uh, at this time, uh, we'll, uh, those who'd like to uh, gather in around the altar, we'll go to prayer, and uh, we'll take prayer requests. Uh, it's good to have Brother Clarence with us this morning, and, uh, and good to see him this morning. Uh, remember, uh, Deanna and Bobby not able to be with us here this morning, uh, not feeling very well, and... Um, uh, Sister Cindy Price, uh, you got a report on her, Brother Jack? She's, she's out in the room, but I couldn't get in there today, this morning. I'm going to see her because we're going to make the wrong hour, she said. Okay. So I went the other day, and it said it's wrong hour, and I went back again today at those hours. And uh, I guess I see you out in the room at different hours, maybe, so it's the wrong hour. I couldn't be. Okay. Well, remember Cindy Price. Her family. certainly remember her and uh, Loretta Weaver not feeling well and uh, Denver Kinder uh, I'll just I don't know. give you an update on, on him uh, it's a praise report but he still needs prayer he was taken off the vent um, Friday morning still off of it um, bottles are good and uh, breathing on his own and uh, <clears throat> uh, they were going to put a feeding tube in him yesterday or today. Uh, he's not awake, but he is responding to <clears throat> commands. And uh, so, again, nothing but God and prayer has brought him through because the, <clears throat> the doctors didn't give, him, give the family any hope of him coming off of it. And uh, so just continue to pray for him and uh, a recovery and... and uh, there's a reason. And uh, I ask you to remember Larry Dyer. He's got uh, like three surgeries this week starting tomorrow for the Parkinson's. They're going back in on the brain. And uh, just remember him. 
<coughs> those requests. Remember that family. Remember um, <coughs> Stephanie Burns. <coughs> she was uh, pregnant with twins. We were here the same day that we, she lost both. So uh, be in prayer for that family. Remember that family. I want to give a praise to the sports this morning. My sister and brother all up in a high. They were exposed to COVID by their house cleaner, and uh, they've been quarantined. They've been tested. Let's remember the loss this morning. It'd be a great day to see see a soul saved. Uh, God's in the saving business, you know. Uh, we walk around in darkness, and uh, but God is the light. And where God steps in with as light, the darkness has to leave. Same way with the sin, the sin has to go. Praise be to God. Remember that request. Remember that request. Let's uh, remember Let's our uh, new couple, Bailey and Ryan, that were married, and, uh, <coughs> and then the families. Uh, we, we had a <coughs> late evening last night, so we've got uh, there several of them not, uh, not here today. Remember Ryan and Bailey, a uh, beautiful wedding. Tim performed that ceremony, and it was uh, wonderful, beautiful job. And I didn't get the name that she and uh, Beth had mentioned on the request. Nisi. Nisi, yes. Remember Nisi, praise the Lord. Remember our nation this morning. Let's remember our country. Uh, it, it certainly needs prayer. And... Uh, Hey, remember Eric? He's got a couple of fractures in his back. Uh, remember that. Remember our neighbor, uh, Wes Conley. He uh, fell off a porch. He was working on a rental property and pulled his bicep was completely loose. So it, they had to put all that back together. But My. it's going to cost them a lot, and it's also going to put them out of work for about six months. So remember that. Remember that. Remember Brother Jack this morning. I'd be bringing in a message. Any other request? Let's continue to remember our, our kiddos that, um, that school is their refuge and they don't have that right now. Let's, let's just pray for them that, that God just protects them and they feel the love and the hand of God on them. Absolutely. Just remember the children. They're, you know, they're, uh, they're, they're dealing with some 
unusual things. It's unusual times. And uh, parents and uh, uh, folks that's having to work with trying to teach and help these kids along, you know, and, and on computers and, and things. And, and it, it, it's difficult. Uh, let's remember that. Any other request? Brother Larry, would you lead us in prayer, please?
Amen. We could have our ushers uh, at this time. Thank you, Tammy and Timmy. Uh, I believe it's jelly bean time. We got some jelly beaners out here this morning. We might have some extra some this morning.
two gloves here. So sometimes when I'm cleaning, I wear gloves like these to, to clean and to help me protect my hands and things like that. So usually when I see gloves, I think of work. Do you guys kind of think of work when you see gloves sometimes? No, no maybe not. <laughs> well, when we celebrate... When we celebrate Labor Day, we're celebrating the value of work. Our, hang on, hang on just a minute. Our parents, or your parents, go to work so that you guys can have food and clothes and a house to live in. And God has given each one of us and a bathtub and an Xbox and, and lots of things. We are Xbox in the shower. And God has given each one of us very special talents. And so, hang on just a minute. <laughs> so as you grow and you learn, you will know how to use those talents. You may be a speaking talent that some of us have. Huh? And one day you'll have the opportunity to glorify God through those talents and through your work. Whether your job involves wearing a pair of gloves like these or wearing a suit and tie, whatever you do, whatever work you do, you can use your work to glorify the Lord, right? All right. Do you want to do our Lord's Prayer? No. Okay. Will you do our Lord's Prayer? Thank you. Our Father, who art in heaven, how I be thy name. My kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Forgive us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine and kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. the Lord. Uh, I think we have uh, Roger going to sing for us this morning. You, you come right ahead. <laughs> Good to have Roger uh, Johnson with us this morning. Praise the Lord. Which mic? Good to be here today. Amen. Beautiful day to be in anywhere and have the health and strength to do it. Amen. So I've come too far to look back. It's the name of this song, and that's uh, sort of what life is about. Too far to look back 
again There is nothing behind me All the treasures I used to know Have all faded from view There's a new day ahead for me All my heartache is over For I left it at Calvary Where my new life began I've come too far to look back My feet have walked through the valley I've climbed mountains, crossed rivers Desert places I've known But I'm nearing the home The redeemed are rejoicing Heaven's angels are singing I've come too far to look back Look around, there's no happiness There's no reason for living Life will give you a broken dream Full of sorrow and fear Turn around, don't look back again Face the new day before you place your heartache in Jesus hands he can mend broken dreams I've come too far to look back my feet have walked through the valley I've climbed mountains, cross rivers, desert places I've known, but I'm nearing the home shore, the redeemed are rejoicing, heaven's angels are singing. I've come too far to look back But I'm nearing the home shore The redeemed are rejoicing Heaven's angels are singing I've come too far to look back Too far to look back. You got another, Brother Roger? You got another one? Beautiful song. Come too far to look back. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Roger. Anybody else got a song this morning? Uh, testimony. God been good to you this week. Certainly been good to me.
thankful for that life. You know, it's uh, some of these mothers, uh, maybe with the, uh, the abortion on their mind, uh, when they get to see those images and see things, many times those uh, decisions is, is changed. So it, it, it's wonderful that we can experience that these days, uh, those things. So praise the Lord for it. Anybody else? Testimony. Song. It's your service. Okay. We're going to bring Brother Jack. Praise the Lord. Bless you, Brother Randy. Bless you, Brother Jack. Love you, brother. Love you. Praise the Lord. Brother Randy said it's it's your service, and it is our service. It's up to what we uh, do for the Lord, and I'm made to believe that every one of us has something to do with that service. Whatever we do or don't do affects the service. <clears throat> Praise the Lord! And so I always try to mind. The Lord. I always try to mind the Lord, what He lays on my heart to do. That's my part. And God, uh, he knows each one of us. He knows the service. He knows who's here. He's here to bless us. We've come to his house, and he wants to bless us, encourage us. And when we go home, we can, uh, we can say that we've been with the Lord and that we've been in the presence of God. And we've got something to talk about, he and I, when I leave here, praise the Lord, that... that we have had some communion and interaction. Uh, sometimes we're passive in the worship service if we're not awfully careful. Uh, we don't interchange or don't do anything back and forth. But I believe, I believe worship is an interaction service. It's an interaction thing with us and God. And the children of Israel said, you tell Pharaoh... We've got to go worship on the mountain up there. Now, of course, Pharaoh didn't understand that because he didn't know a living God as of yet. But if you know the living God, you know what worship is and you know that God requires worship and that God wants worship from me and him, to, from me to him. He's worthy of worship this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And uh, he's worthy of all that we could praise him this morning. He's worthy of all that today. If we uh, say anything, uh, sometimes we can't say what we'd like to in our heart, but if we say praise the Lord, that's, uh, that's worship also. Praise the Lord. And I thought about Josh when 16 years ago they had an ultrasound. Well, we didn't have ultrasounds back when we had ours. There wasn't anything like an ultrasound. We couldn't see them for nine months. Praise the Lord. And I thought how fascinating it is. <clears throat> Not only can they see them, but they put it on the internet and everybody else sees them. So this is a, this is a, this is a thing that we all go along with it. And we're all anxious to see what they look like and what, what they're doing and as they develop. I'm, I'm amazed that they can take an image from your tummy and put it up on a screen and you can send that to anybody in the world wow and they say it's doesn't mean anything if if man can do that look what god can do by putting life and bones and flesh inside the womb the scripture says that's an, that's a miracle that's that's something that man cannot explain they try to explain it away, but they can't explain how God does it, you see. Praise the Lord. I thought you did a good job, Brother Roger. 
with that song this morning. It touched my heart. Probably the Lord did that for me, I imagine. But I appreciate the song this morning. Come too far to look back. I thought we had a good Sunday school this morning, Brother Larry. I thought that was good this morning. The Sunday school, how God provides for us. If you deny that this morning, raise your hand that God hasn't provided for you. Don't see any hands. Don't see any takers on it this morning. God provides. He always provides. If he puts a child in the womb and it comes out of the womb and it lives, God will provide for that child. And also, if it doesn't live, if, it, if it's born, if it doesn't make it to the nine months and God chooses a different route, God still provides. He provides for that child. When it can't make a choice for itself, when it can't make, uh, uh, doesn't, has never come to the knowledge of the truth about sin, doesn't know anything about it, and there's no sin there, God provides protection. And he provides heaven just as sure as he does for those who believe in Jesus Christ this morning. How important the service is this morning. We're down a little bit in number, but my, we're still just as good as we were last week. I thought we had a good homecoming. I haven't heard a word said about it this morning, but we've already forgot about the big meal and all kinds of things that we had, and uh, we've kind of forgot about that. We're ready for another one. Praise the Lord. But I thought we had a good, a good time in the Lord, and I thought Brother Collinsworth did a wonderful job. I thought our singers did a wonderful job. The only thing that wasn't done exactly right was the, the one that opened the service, he didn't take up a, an offering. So we say to you, when, when the preacher forgets to take up the offering, just put in twice as much the next week. Amen. And you listen to me uh, out there that uh, maybe you just, just send it in by mail. That's all right. We don't care. We take mail orders too and things like that. Praise the Lord. But in the lesson this morning, we appreciate each one of you and you come this way. Our heart goes out to those whom are sick. A good report, uh, Brother Clarence gave us a good report on his eyes. Uh, even the uh, second eye is better than the first eye and we praise the Lord for that. And uh, God will provide for us. I, I thank the Lord for that. In John's Gospel this morning, the 17th chapter, about the fourth verse, 17.4 St. John 17.4 and 5 I have glorified thee on the earth I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do and now, I, and now O Father glorify thou me with thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Praise the Lord. Father, we bow our head before you this morning and thank you, Lord, for this service, this day of life, Lord. We've already finished another week, dear Lord. We're in the Sabbath day, the day that you howled out and said it was, it's a special day. Lord, we thank you and praise you for it this morning that you put it in our heart. And in our strength to be able to attain another church service, dear Lord. Pray for those who are sick this morning. We pray, O oh God, those who are listening on the air this morning, dear Lord, over the broadcast. If they be sick this morning, I pray that you'll bless them and help them and heal them, we pray. We thank you, Lord, for victory in our life this morning. We thank you for what Christ has done for us, <clears throat> dear Lord. We thank you for what he did on the cross. And that he did it also on the inside of us, dear Lord. We thank you for that, the finished work of Christ. We love you this morning. We pray that you'll touch every heart. Maybe there's one that doesn't know you personally, dear Lord. Maybe they haven't got acquainted with you as such this morning. We pray for them this morning. And we love you today. We know you have access to every heart. And we know this, your will this morning. The scripture teaches us that it's not any... Your will that not any perish, dear Lord, but all come to repentance, all come to the knowledge of the truth that Christ is a Son of God and that they need him in their life, we pray. We thank you and praise you. Bless us together, we pray, as in a few moments, dear Lord, as we uh, 
try and attempt to preach and do your will, we pray this morning in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated this morning. Praise the Lord. We find Christ praying down through, just in these five verses here, we find him praying for himself here. And if you go just a little further on, he prays for his followers also. Praise the Lord. He prays for the 12, and he also prays for those who have never known him as yet, all down through the, the generations of men. Praise the Lord. And so we find that the model prayer, the very model prayer that we recite in the Jelly Bean Church every Sunday, and we appreciate that. It's in the, the 11th chapter of Luke, actually. But the real prayer that's been prayed, actually, that Jesus prayed is in this scripture right here, the 17th chapter of St. John's Gospel. Praise the Lord. And so we appreciate all the jelly beaners that are, that are learning the Lord's Prayer. I, I challenge you to learn that because it'll, it will help you down through your life. Praise the Lord. There'll be times that you will need that prayer because you can't find another prayer. <laughs> and it always says the right thing. That model prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, it always says the right thing there. And I, I challenge everyone to say that prayer in the spirit. Sometimes we recite it. But I challenge you to get where you can say it in the spirit. Praise the Lord, because there's a difference. It becomes live. It becomes live streamed to our heart when we say it in the spirit. And, and probably to say it in the spirit, you'll probably have to be able to recite it, probably. So this morning, as we dwell upon this uh, few verses here through the fifth verse here, we find that Jesus is, is praying and he actually comes to the realize that I'm, I'm going to death. I'm going to die. My time is at hand. Sometimes uh, when we think of death, we think of, of, the, of the, us going down. But at the same time, we ought to think when death comes close, we're going up, actually. Amen. We're going up. It's not a t the old body may go to the ground. It may go down. But, but we're going up, praise the Lord. And I, I, I know it's true because all the things in the scripture teach me that I've, I, I've seen of all the resurrections, it, it comes up, you see. And so I, I dwell upon those things and I realize one of these days that death it will, is on my trail and I realize that death will overtake me one of these days, but I'm going to be with the Lord. I'm going up. Praise the Lord this morning. I encourage you in that this morning that we're not, the devil would like to think, make us think that that's the end of things, but it's not. The best part yet to come, praise God forever, and be cheered on by the Spirit of God and by the Word of God this morning that, that Jesus, I know he was praying because the physical part, it hates to go through death. It does. We don't want to go through there, and I don't want to go through there. Praise the Lord. I told my father once and we began to discuss uh, the latter stage of his life and he realized that he could still reason some in his mind and I told him about a feeding tube. And I, I tried to help him understand and, and for him to know that it was coming time that they had discussed with us and I'm discussing with you about a feeding tube but that's not the cure and it won't help you much. And he was able to reason and he said, it sounds like somebody's got to die. Somebody's got to die. That's the very words. I quote him. It sounds like somebody has to die. And so we find in this scripture here this morning that, that Christ is saying somebody has to die. Praise the Lord. Either me, either you, or I have to die. Praise God for it. Because there is no other cure and there's no other way. It sounds like somebody has to die. Praise the Lord. Glory, hallelujah. And I'm thankful that our, our Savior, he came to the, the place 
And the realization that God has sent him into the world, he realized that even before here, but, but it's close. He's staring him in the face now. And he realizes that he has to overcome the flesh. You and I have to overcome the flesh every day. Because the flesh, part of us, it does not want anything to do with the Lord or with the Spirit. There's a contrast and, and a rebelling one against the other. Praise the Lord. And so he says in this prayer here, I pray, O God, and he's looking at, at the death and the resurrection, and I pray, O Heavenly Father, I pray that you will glorify me. Help me to overcome that you glorify me, praise the Lord. When I go through this and when I begin to give up the ghost and I come to the place that my life is finished here on earth, that you will glorify me and I will be praised with the glory that I had before I ever came into this world. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad this morning that, 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 that there was one that came from glory and came all the way to earth. He gave all, uh, all the, the, the things that all of his glory and all of his beauty and all of his power. And he laid it aside and said, I will, I will be what you want me to be. I'll be the son of God and I'll go to earth. And I will be submissive to your will and you can choose where you want me to be born and you can put me in a womb and be born, praise the Lord, of a virgin birth, hallelujah. And I will go to earth, but it's not a, if you would compare it unto the very glory that he had before he ever came, when you see him in this prayer and you see him asking for the glory that he had before he came and asking for God to give him strength to carry out the mission, Praise the Lord. You would say it's not the same glory, the same picture. He doesn't have the glory upon him. Praise the Lord. We found in the lesson this morning how the children of Israel, that there was a glory that they could view, they could look at, the glory that God wanted them to see, that, that he was God. They couldn't look upon God, but they could see the glory of God as they journeyed through the wilderness of sin. They could see that. As they left Egypt, that, were, that presence was with them. And they could see that, that God, that there was a God that had led them out of Egypt. Praise the Lord. And if you'll take time to study and, and, and look upon the things that God has done for us, you can find out if you're a Christian this morning, every day of our life, that we can, we can learn to praise him because he's brought us out of Egypt, out of sin, praise the Lord, and he does something on the inside, miraculous for us, that his glory shines clear down in the soul of man. Shines clear down in the soul of man. And I have to give him praise. <laughs> praise the Lord, because what he's done for me, I'm not what I was. Glory, hallelujah, this morning. I'm not what I was. I'm not what I'm going to be. But I belong to him this morning because I've been changed on the inside. A new heart's been given me and I'm a saved child of God. And his glory shines down in my heart and soul this morning. He prayed for me. Praise the Lord before I was ever born. Amen. Praise his name this morning. Glory, hallelujah. Aren't you glad that, you're, that, that the mighty God prays for us and he's already cheers us on and he's for us that you and I attain the kingdom of God? It's his will. Praise the Lord that we inherit the kingdom and the riches of his glory. Praise God. We enjoy these things that he has for us here, but there's more to come. There's something better than this world. This is just a, 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 a place to get ready to go somewhere else. A dressing room. They got the dressing rooms closed now. You know that? I went up to Coles not too long ago, and you just have to take it home with you. You know those middle sizes that some of us are? You don't know whether they're going to work or whether they're not going to work? Well, you can't go into the dressing room. They don't want you in there. And two thirds of the thing that you take out probably will never be back. They know that. Praise the Lord. 
And so this world is just a dressing room. I pray for the glory, dear Lord, as I begin to lay this body down, that you'll glorify me, that I'll have accomplished, praise the Lord, the very thing that you sent me into the world to do, I will have accomplished that, and it will go out, uh, uh, eternal life will be prevalent to every person that would be born in the world. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad that you, in your rim this morning, that there is eternal life in it? In our, in our life, in, in our rim this morning, I don't care if you're a sinner or you're, or you're a Christian, but eternal life is in all of our rims because, because of the glory of God that he sent into the world. Praise the Lord through Jesus Christ, the one that loves us and laid his life down for us. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah this morning. I worship him this morning. He's my God. He's my keeper this morning. He's the one that loves me. Praise the Lord. I know him personally this morning and I can have a conversation with him. Praise the Lord. So glorify me, O oh God, he says, like I had before I came. I can't imagine his glory. I can't imagine what it would be to look upon the face of Jesus. I can't imagine what he looked like before he came into this world. We, we view him as just like a man. I view him just like one, looking upon you all. That's the way I view him. But oh, when I see him, when I see him, praise the Lord, I'll see him in his beauty and his glory, praise the Lord. I'll see him in his perfectness. I'll see him as the very son of God like he was before he ever came into the world. I'll see him, praise the Lord, like he is there. He took his disciples upon the mount there and they saw him transfigured and some of his glory and they said, it's good for us to be here. We'll make a tabernacle for all these that we see. <laughs> but everybody doesn't need a tabernacle. Everybody can't give you eternal life. There's only eternal life this morning in one name this morning. It's not through Elijah. It's not through any prophet. It's through Jesus Christ this morning. It's through the very Son of God. He is the one that God has glorified and sent into the world. Praise the Lord. And look what he's done. He went to the cross. He died. They put him in a tomb and he went to the cross and they buried him. Praise the Lord. Let us see his glory. Father, glorify me with the glory that I had before I came into the world. And we thank God for that. On the third day, on the third day we saw his glory. He came forth. Praise God forever. There's God that raised him from the dead. Praise the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. That's why we come to the house of God. It's to worship and to praise the living God this morning that has glory and power in his name and in his life. Praise the Lord this morning. Father, glorify me like I was before I came into the world. That they may know they may know that they have eternal life. Do you know you have eternal life this morning? I know that. I know that this morning. Eternal life. That some call it eternal security. I call it eternal security too. Eternal security. Praise the Lord that I know for sure that heaven belongs to me this morning. Praise the Lord. They cast some kind of try to turn it around and make it another way. What he's talking about, you can be assured of eternal life this morning. Praise the Lord. And I thought about the, 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 the disciples after the resurrection and after they couldn't see Jesus. I thought about on the, the third appearance of Christ that he appeared to them. Praise God forever. And, and, and as he uh, appeared there on the, on the seashore to them, I thought about this along with what Christ had done. He prayed for his glory after his resurrection and going through the death and the burial and the resurrection that God would glorify him. We find the disciples now, we find them on the seashore because Peter said, I'm going fishing. <laughs> yeah. We the church, that's what happens sometimes is we, we go fishing. Praise the Lord. Instead of waiting for what the, the, the promise is and what God has said to us and that, that the coming of the Holy Spirit and looking for when these dry places come, asking God for more grace and more power in our lives, we find that we just take off and go fishing sometimes. I'm talking about in our spiritual life. We might not be at the lake somewhere, but in our soul, we're kind of fishing, you know. 
Praise the Lord. And the other said, I'm going with you fishing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. In my mind, I do a lot of fishing. My little grandson kind of ribbed me up the other day. He said, Papa, I just got through playing some badminton with him, and he's staying with us a little bit, and he just, he's just a little bit higher life than I am. He said, let's go, let's go fishing. Now, can we go fishing after this? I said, yeah, we try to, but maybe after a while. Thank the Lord we couldn't find any worms. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So they, they're going fishing. They're going fishing. Praise the Lord. And here as they have toiled all night. And Jesus said, have you caught anything? Have you caught anything? My, my mission, my mission is to catch something spiritually every day. Every day my mission is to catch some of his glory and some of his, what he has for me in the day. Praise the Lord. It's not playing Batman, not honey, whatever it may be. I'm after something spiritual for my soul. Hallelujah. Because that's what's eternal and that's what's keeping my soul is something spiritual. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Have you any meat? No, we don't have any. Have you caught anything? No, we haven't caught anything. We've told all night. Praise the Lord. I've already prayed for you that you'll catch something. Praise God. When you go out on Monday morning, see if you can catch something. Praise the Lord. I went to the hospital this morning to see Sister Pryor. I didn't catch a thing. They deterred me from the door. Going back home, you're not at the right hours. That's all right. We'll try again some other time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah this morning. There is something, I say this to us as a church, there's always something to catch. Amen. The devil will try to attract us and cause our eyes to go somewhere else, try, try to make our mind dwell upon something else. But if you dwell, dwell upon spiritual things, Amen. spiritual things, I'm talking about the good things that are free, praise the Lord. You know, we go past McDonald's and we go, boy, oh, it just about takes our breath. Go Kentucky Fried Chicken, go past there. Wait here about one o'clock and you wait to get your lunch about one o'clock and you pass McDonald's and things. If you don't smell anything, you'll think you do. Praise the Lord. And it will lure you that away. That's the way this world is, it lures us away from the spiritual part, you see. The spiritual part needs something to feed it. It needs something to keep it. It needs something to feed it, praise the Lord. Have you caught anything? Have you caught anything last night? We haven't caught a thing. Here's what Jesus, here's, here's Jesus' word. Just cast your net on the other side. Praise the Lord. I want you to see some of my glory. I want you to see what, who Jesus is. Just cast your net on the other side and you shall catch, praise the Lord. Whenever, whenever you're not catching anything, whenever we're not catching anything, just take your net and just put it over on the other side of the boat, spiritually speaking. Praise the Lord. When you prayed and you haven't got anything yet, just take it and just try one more time and just cast it up on the other side. I say praise the Lord this morning because, brother, there's fishes in the sea. And there's something, uh, there's spiritual meat for my soul, praise the Lord. And he was trying to tell the Israelite people when Jesus came, I am the true bread. This is what you need. This is what eternal life is about. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about the Son of God. It's about the one that was glorified and came to earth and died for your sins, praise the Lord, and rose again on the third day. And he lives today, praise the Lord, and sits on the right hand of the Father, makes intercessions for us. And he died and he blood, praise God, is a propitiation. That blood, I thought about the blood this week. I thought about how much blood would it take for my sins? How much blood would it take for my sin? Well, literally speaking, we know that all the blood of Jesus just drained out of his body. But I believe the blood that was shed on Calvary is sufficient for my sins this morning. The blood Praise the Lord. The blood that literally dropped on the ground, I believe the blood, it takes the blood this morning for the sins of an individual. I believe that. Praise the Lord. And they weren't able to even bring the fishes to, sea, to the land out of the sea. 
But well, I'm glad when they got to land. Here's what happened when they got to land. Jesus already had something going. He already had a little fire started. And he already had some fish broiled on the seashore there. I can't explain all that except I know he's God this morning. <laughs> Praise the Lord. If you're hungry for fish, he'll feed you fish. If you're hungry for chicken, he'll feed you chicken. He always feeds preachers chicken. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I haven't ever starved for chicken yet. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And I say this spiritually to you this morning. Church, we need the bread of God. Amen. We need what he has for us. I know the whole world, the whole world's gone crazy. And they say, there's no need to come to the house of God. I'm afraid. I'm afraid not to. I'm telling you how I feel. I'm afraid not to. I'm afraid I'll get a little dull. I'm afraid I'll lose my, the spiritualness that I have down in my soul. I'm afraid I, I won't get that back. I'm afraid that the doors might be closed. Maybe if I could step through the door just a few more times, just a few more days, it'll keep the door. The church is open, praise the Lord. Maybe I can kneel at the old altar and pray for somebody and maybe just a little longer God will touch their hearts and prick their spirit and quicken it. Maybe, maybe I'll make a difference. Praise the Lord. I've got children and grandchildren needs prayer. Praise the Lord. Maybe the spirit will move upon me and I'll fall on my knees. Praise God. It'll stir me before I can get a hold of God and pray for them. Amen. I've got six or seven men. I've got six or seven men that I pray for every day. Maybe I'll be spiritual enough. Praise God. I can touch the throne room and the Holy Spirit will go out and stir their hearts like never before. Maybe they'll get scared. Maybe they'll get scared about losing their soul. Hallelujah. We need the world scared, but we don't need it scared about the virus. We need it scared about the fear of God, about who God is. Praise God. About a hell that's hot this morning and waiting in his largest mouth without measure that they don't have to go to that awful place called hell. They can go to heaven. Praise the Lord. There's a heaven that Jesus went away. Prepare for us. Praise the Lord. Have you called anything lately? Lord, when you haven't called anything, I tell you what, draw close to the Lord. Draw close to him, brother. He has something for us, and he'll bless us. He'll help us maintain that spiritual part in us. Oh, everywhere we go, we have to put the mask on. Everywhere we go, we, where we go to eat, they want your money, but they don't want you. I'm telling you the truth. They don't want you to use their bathrooms. They don't want you to use their courthouses. They don't want you to use anything. Just give us your money. Praise the Lord. Well, where's the, where's the, uh, the catering? Where's the, where's the things that you promised that goes along with this? Just stay away. Come to our place and we'll serve you, but go on your way. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you this morning. I want, to, I want to proclaim to you this morning that there is a table spread this morning and it's God that spreads a table and he said, come unto me because I care for you and you're burning, I'll make it light. Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, I'll, he'll feed us and, and bless us and fill us up, praise God forever. If I die, I want to die full spiritually. Amen. I want to die full spiritually. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad this morning that we can just come and eat? Doesn't cost you anything this morning. Praise the Lord. I don't know what else to say this morning except that God's good today. Amen. Call upon him. <laughs> He'll help you with your burden. He'll help you with all that you have to go through life. Just come to his table. Oh, praise the Lord this morning. I worship him in spirit and truth today. He's, he is God Almighty. And I'll tell you what, he, he has glorified him with the glory that he had before he came. And I have seen, I have seen for myself some of that glory. I've journeyed around this place here. I've lived long enough. Let me tell you this, devil, I've lived long enough already. You can't fool me anymore. I know heaven's real and I'm going there by the help of the Lord. If he takes me today, I've lived long enough. I'm not scared of death, praise the Lord. It's, it, it's out there somewhere, but praise God forever. It's, it's not the worst enemy. 
You know what the worst enemy is? Old Jack is the worst enemy. And Satan is the next enemy. And the world is an enemy to me. Do you love the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise his holy name this morning. Praise the Lord. Billy Graham said, if you they say that I'm dead and have died, don't believe it, he said. And I tell you the same thing. If they say Jack's dead, you say, I, I just can't believe Jack's dead. They're going to take his body, but I've gone to be with the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's what's important to me this morning. It's not how long I live. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It said, I die right. I die to go to be with the Lord this morning. I'm going this way. Now that's in our choice, in our realm. I'm talking about eternal life is in our realm. God has given us a time to make a choice. The Holy Spirit deals with us and digs around our roots. And it'll show you who God is. It'll show you who Jesus Christ is. And it'll pull you and draw you to the place that you can find salvation. It'll bring us, if we're in the house of God and come to worship, it'll bring us close to where we can find food for our soul. It'll do that this morning. So as we get a song this morning, we invite you. I say to the, to the lost, I say to the uh, Christian, have you caught anything this morning? Have you seen some of that glory? Praise the Lord. If you, the glory, let me say this, the glory is what keeps us from getting discouraged. The glory is. It keeps us moving. The glory of God does. It keeps us moving. Praise the Lord. You'll get discouraged in this world. But oh, I say to you what? Well, keep your eye up on Jesus this morning. Father, as we stand this morning, we thank you and praise you for your love. We thank you this morning, dear Lord, that you're so real to us. You quench the, the, the fiery darts of Satan for us, dear Lord, through the Holy Spirit. You feed us that manna from heaven. Dear Lord, spiritually speaking, I praise you this morning. Dear Lord, you know who's here, who's not here this morning. You know every heart. You, you, I pray, dear Lord, that you open the altar service. The invitation will go out this morning, dear Lord, that if somebody has need of you this morning and what you have for them, whoever it may be, dear Lord, that they'll come and pray this morning. They'll not go out the door the same way we pray. In Jesus' name we ask.